Welcome to Kevin Makes Cool Things, I'm Kevin, and this is my 3D printed Horn of the Goblin General, famously used by the fearsome commander Henry Emmott from Overlord. I love Overlord, and I've wanted to make this for quite a while. I tried doing it in OpenSCAD a couple of months ago, but it was such a pain that I ended up putting it off. Recently, I've tried learning Blender, and I decided to revisit the project. Before doing this project, my only background with Blender was watching the 3D Printing Professor's Blender series, which taught me enough about the software to get started. Initially, I spent around 4 hours on this over the course of a weekend. I restarted a bunch of times and learned a lot. Eventually, I got this result, which I couldn't get to be manifold, not even using Repetier Host to repair it, but it was surprisingly good given that I'd never used the software before. After finishing this model, I moved over to my second Blender project, which was making Rikasa's Fang from the solo leveling Manwa. That was a much more complicated model, and I learned a bunch on it, so I decided to circle back and see if I could do an even better job on this. My revised version only took about 40 minutes to make. This is a sped up version of that entire modeling process. I started with a cylinder, which I moved, extruded, and scaled to match a reference image. I used a subdivision surface modifier to round everything, and then creased the edges I wanted to remain crisp. Lastly, I cut in some holes for the metal eyelets and hollowed out the center. It's not perfect, but I'm really pleased with the model. I did this with 10 to 15 hours of experience and it's really amazing what a couple weekends of practice can allow you to do with Blender. If you're interested in this kind of thing, I highly recommend you give it a shot. I printed two versions of this. The first was all one piece, like I showed when I was modeling it. The second was divided into two pieces, so the details were at a better orientation during printing. The two-part version was much better quality, so I ended up using that. I used some nails and two-part epoxy to attach these pieces together. If you've watched my other videos, you know my process for finishing prints, but it's actually changed a little bit. I couldn't really make a mess in the place I was living before, but now I've moved, so I have access to a lot more tools and materials. I sanded everything, both by hand and with a Dremel tool. Then I applied some wood filler and did some more hand sanding. I drilled out the holes for the eyelets bent some wire into shape, and then epoxied everything in place. I did end up drilling a little too deep on one of these, so the bottom of the wire is slightly visible on the interior of the horn. Instead of priming my print by repeatedly painting it with white acrylic paint, I tried using a spray-on sandable primer, which worked pretty well. For painting, I actually bought an airbrush to try to upgrade my painting setup. I'm glad I tried it, but it wasn't too successful on this project. I botched the colors on my first attempt, so I ended up washing off the first coat of paint and trying again. My second attempt went better, but I still ran into issues when I tried to add a second color. I had some minor problems with paint bleeding under the masking tape, although it was nowhere near as bad as what I was dealing with on my Rikasa's Fang Dagger. Unfortunately, since I mixed up an off-white for the horn, I couldn't easily go back and touch up the paint without mixing an entirely new color and repainting everything. My first plan was just to be really careful, and I did a decent job when I was adding gold to the edge of the ribbon and to the seals. I messed up when I was painting the leather ties, and there was no way around repainting this. I ended up using an off-white acrylic paint that I already had. It was the right choice, but it was a bummer to paint over all that airbrush work that I was so excited about. The only airbrush part left was the red ribbon. Quite honestly, I could have gotten a slightly better result if I painted over it with normal acrylic paint, but I wanted to leave it so that at least some part of this was still airbrushed. For the mouthpiece, I mixed some of my metallic gold paint with a little bit of black to get a duller, darker metallic color. I added the detailing on the horn, and later realized that I forgot to do this piece. So I went back and did that in another coat, which inevitably messed up some other stuff, so I had to go back and touch up everything. Instead of painting on some Mod Podge to give it a nice clear coat, I went with a spray-on matte finish. This worked pretty well, 
although I did manage to mess it up. I sprayed on way too much, because I was trying to cover the bottom and the interior, so I had to let some of it drip off. I also did a really bad job securing this, so it fell while the clear coat was drying. It grabbed some of the gray primer color when it landed, which was a bummer, although it's not super visible. The strap is probably the part of the project I like the least. I wanted to get some pleather strap from the local Michaels, but they didn't have anything, and the ones on Amazon all had terrible reviews. I ended up getting an actual leather strip, but it doesn't sit like I wanted to, and it's just not quite right. It's not the main focus of the project, but it's still really annoying that this detail is wrong. Overall, I think this is one of the best projects I've ever done. The strap bugs me more than it probably should, but the model and the finishing look better than most of my other work. There's definitely some things to improve on, but I'm really happy with the direction it's going. I'll post a link to the SDLs for this in the video description. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like so YouTube will recommend this to more people. If you want to see more of my projects, or you just want to support the channel, I hope you'll subscribe.